the bill and act regarding state investments and the Dakota Access Pipeline. Senate Paper 320 is LD 981. It was tabled on May 4th, 2017 by Senator Hamper of Oxford. Pending motion by the same Senate to accept the majority ought to pass, uh, the majority ought not to pass report. Is it now the pleasure of the Senate to, to accept the majority ought not to pass report? Chair recognizes the Senator from Cumberland, Senator Chipman. Thank you, Mr. President. I request a roll call vote and wish to speak in my motion. The Senator from Cumberland, Senator Chipman, has requested a roll call. In order for the Chair to order a roll call, he must have the express desire of one-fifth of the members present. All those in favor of a roll call, please indicate by raising your hand. Obviously, more than one-fifth of the members present are in favor of a roll call. A roll call is in order. Chair recognizes the Senator from Cumberland, Senator Chipman. Thank you, Mr. President, men and women of the Senate. The Dakota Access Pipeline is an ethically and environmentally irresponsible project, and today we have an opportunity to take a stand against it. This bill is pretty straightforward. It prohibits the Treasurer from depositing funds in any bank that is providing funds, extending credit, or otherwise engaged in the financing of the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. It also prohibits the treasurer from investing in the securities of a corporation or company or other entity that is providing funds, extending credit, or otherwise engaged in financing of this project. And finally, the bill requires the Maine Public Employees Retirement System to divest its holdings in any corporation or company that is constructing or funding the construction of this project. This divestment will be completed by 2019. We've all heard about the problems with the DAPL project. I don't think the state of Maine should be involved in a corporate project that is threatening water rights, especially when the people whose water rights are being threatened were here before the state of Maine existed. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and other tribes near the proposed pipeline route oppose this project and we should stand with them. This pipeline is slated to run just upstream from the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe's reservation. Should a leak happen, their water source would be devastatingly harmed. Additionally, should the oil actually reach its destination safely, the use of that oil will contribute to unclean air and hasten climate change. This pipeline is unnecessary, and it's being built to benefit oil companies at a time when we should be investing in clean, renewable sources of energy. If the state of Maine continues to invest in banks and companies involved in financing and constructing this pipeline, we are investing in the fossil fuel industry. The state should invest in environmentally and responsible projects, and we do have a choice in what banks we do business with. Maine should not be alone in divesting in DAPL. So far, Seattle has taken a stand and moved not to renew its contract with Wells Fargo when it expires next year and will be incentivizing social responsibility when it puts out bids for its next banking partner. Davis, California has taken a stand and will be finding a new bank when its contract runs out at the end of the year. San Francisco's Board of Supervisors has also taken a stand and voted in favor of divestment. And additionally, the Norwegian fund that manages the country's government employees' pensions has taken a stand and will also be divesting. In all honesty, I wish we could do more to respect the wishes of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Like many others across the state, I was disappointed and upset when the U.S. Army, Army Corps of Engineers granted the easement which cleared the way for this project to go forward. However, at a minimum, we must do what we can here in Maine. With the approval of this bill, we can make sure our state isn't profiting off the tribe's pain and loss in a project that poses a real threat to their water supply. The federal government may have approved this pipeline, but we don't need to be involved in financing it. And furthermore, I'd like to add that indeed it's state investment bills like this that led to an end to apartheid. This bill represents the real opportunity of the state of Maine to take a stand against this project, and I hope you'll enjoy me in opposing the pending motion. Thank you. Chair recognizes the Senator from Cumberland, Senator Dionne. Thank you, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of this chamber. I rise in opposition to the proposal advanced by my good friend and brother from Cumberland County. I cannot support action, uh, no matter how sympathetic the, fight, the facts might be, that are occurring in another jurisdiction and are more likely resolved at the federal level and not in this chamber. My concern is if we allow a motion to go through uh, a minority report that would compel divestiture, the constituency I'm worried about are the thousands of Maine people who've made contract with the Maine PERS system on the idea that their money was safe 
and that those fiduciary trustees would make investments on their behalf for economic reasons only. That's the core of fiduciary responsibility, that you're investing other people's money on a trust that you will do so to advance their economic position. Had the good senator from Cumberland announced a resolution that we take notice of a situation that maybe those boards of trustees might take into account during their investments, possibly that would pass muster. But to direct them to divest leads in an equation to the possibility that a change in their investment strategy will cause a loss for the beneficiaries, those who actually invested their money in the retirement system. Those are my neighbors, those are my former co-workers, those are people seated in this chamber today. The pension system made a promise to us, we made our contributions. They're expected to act in a reasonable and prudent fashion to advance the economic interests of that pension system. They cannot and should not take account of changes of social political issues in the general population just for purposes of changing their investment strategy. In closing, I would say this. The Board of Trustees for the retirement system has recognized the challenges raised by those who speak of divestiture and in 2014 established a task force to consider under what circumstances they would evaluate or assess these changing political and cultural issues that may or may not have any relevance to how they invest pensioners and beneficiaries' monies. So I cannot vote for any motion that would interfere in that relationship. That is my primary responsibility as a senator, representing all those who made contract with the pension system and whose monies they invested. Thank you. The pending question before the Senate is acceptance of the majority or not to pass report. If you're in favor of accepting that report, you'll be voting yes. If you're opposed, you'll be voting no. Is the Senate ready for the question? The doorkeepers will secure the chamber and the secretary will open the vote.